Hey y'all, here OS Reviews. In this video, we're taking a look at something pretty cool. It's the Bestmo T100 Robotic Lawn Mower. So previously, we have seen smart vacuum cleaners that are designed for indoor use, of course, including the iRobot Roombas have been popular for over a decade now. But when it comes to robotic lawn mowers, it's a slightly newer category. And this is actually the first model that we'll be taking a look at on this channel. And prior to coming in, I expected this to work in pretty much the same way as a robot vacuum cleaner when it comes to the sensors, cameras for detecting obstacle avoidance, perhaps with just some blades at the bottom to actually cut the grass. However, it turns out there's actually quite a few differences when it comes to the technology. For example, instead of only relying on cameras as well as LiDAR for edge and obstacle avoidance, it actually uses a GPS unit which has to be positioned somewhere on your lawn or on the roof of your house. And this GPS then communicates via Wi-Fi to the robot lawn mower allowing it to detect the correct position as well as set up virtual maps including up to 1.5 acres of land that you're able to mow using the robot. Powered here using USB Type-C and it's also going to be ingress proof so you can leave it outdoors. Or you might choose to mount it on the very top of a building similar to a satellite for it to get better reception to improve on the GPS signal strength. So in terms of why it needs that separate GPS component, the answer is because it's covering, again, a larger piece of land. If you have a larger backyard or front yard, managing larger properties, compared to indoor robot vacuum cleaners, it's going to be harder for cameras alone to detect the edges of a perimeter, especially if the lawn surface area might stretch on for meters and meters in front of it. There really isn't anything to kind of block it off. And so for it to have a better idea of the exact dimensions of the land that you're trying to mow, covering a larger space. That's where that GPS positioning technology will assist it on top of the conventional camera sensors on the very front for obstacle avoidance functionality. And then the second misconception I had was similar to a robot vacuum cleaner. I assumed that it would also just keep the grass cuttings instead of a separate compartment like trash for you to then empty out. But no, actually don't pick up on the grass clippings and because it's using something called mulching instead uh, because these are designed to just maintain a shorter length length for the grass. Essentially, the grass that's cut each time will be very fine particles, usually at just one millimeter size or less. And so it can be thought of as a form of natural fertilizer that can decompose and even add some nutrients to the grass underneath. Even if you're walking through with bare feet, it doesn't really leave any particles with you as long as you're running the robot once or twice every week, again, maintaining a shorter length for the grass. Furthermore, it keeps the weight down and helps the robot run for longer without the battery depleting, which by the way, this model can last roughly 210 minutes, so over three hours of lawn mowing before it has to automatically return to the base for charging itself back up and then resuming when it needs to again. So those were two aspects which worked a little differently compared to my expectations coming in. Now, when it comes to setup, this thing is also compatible with a companion app available for either iOS or Android, allowing you to set up new mapping boundaries for new terrains, as well as allow it to mow the lawn twice for added thoroughness, check on the current progress, again, very similar to a vacuum cleaner that we'll see later on. And the wheels here are rated to climb up to 30 degree inclines, so it's going to be a little bit more robust as well versus an indoor robot vacuum cleaner, since there will be steeper hills that are less even outdoors. And so the motors will be a little bit more powerful on here as a result. Furthermore, it's going to be water resistant and rain resistant, so you can leave it outside, even the charging dock. Uh, everything here is weather sealed, including the power plugs, so you don't have to worry about it getting slightly damp. You can even wash it out or rinse off the back uh, with some water just for easier cleaning. So again, compared to an indoor robot vacuum cleaner, it's going to be a little bit more durable and robust. Last but not least, what's kind of interesting about this company, Best Mow, is versus many other robotic lawn mowers, they actually have an optional subscription plan. So if you find the outright cost of owning a model to be a little too expensive, you want to just try one out, you can actually purchase just monthly subscriptions. As you can see here with a free trial period as well compared to just a one-time upfront purchase since again the larger motors as well as the spinning blades and ingress protection does make robotic lawn mowers typically more expensive than the indoor vacuum cleaner types at this moment. So I do like the fact that they offer that as another option just for trying it out or only using it for certain months compared to just buying the entire unit up front which you can also do as well just choose and pick. 
When it comes to packaging contents, at first I thought it was a little funny because the instruction manual is printed on this giant poster-sized paper. It's the largest user guide that I've seen in my life. It's actually a couple of feet wide, but it makes it pretty clear in terms of contents as well as some easy steps to get it initially set up. With some additional accessories, including optional screwdrivers, along with some extra screws and even replacement blades, if they ever get dull, you can swap them out and purchase more sets, although three are already pre-installed out of the box on the robotic lawn mower, so these are just extras. You also find the accessories for the GPS antenna part that you can again use to mount directly on the wall of a building, on the roof, or you can mount using that pole style on the lawn. And it also tells you that in terms of the positioning of that antenna, ideally you should place it in an area that's relatively clear. For example, for the best reception quality up to 120 degrees above it, it shouldn't be really obstructed by trees if possible as well as buildings. So keep that in mind, in a clear area it's going to work the best in terms of locking into the satellites the quickest. And by the way, if you're interested in that subscription model, you also own the lawnmower after 12 or 24 months, kind of like an on-contract smartphone compared to an unlocked smartphone. If you want to go that route, there's also a coupon code available in the description box below, lowering the cost by around $10 each month, so you can check that out if you're interested. And interestingly, when the robotic lawnmower is delivered, you also get an automated email from their team providing more detailed instructions for setup, including an online scheduling tool with their support team. You can set up a one to two hour live chat with them to more easily help you get everything set up, even without reading the instructions. I think that's a pretty nice personalized touch, being able to speak with an actual human to make the setup process even easier if you need to reference that. This is also what the unit looks like when we turn it around on a ground. You can see the three spinning blades uh, that you can replace if it gets dull. And by the way, you can change the length of grass that it can cut, going up to four inches of grass at the maximum height, which you can also access a plate over here to adjust the length to a lower amount as well. For example, if you want to cut under one inch, you can adjust the setting under here. Again, similar to an indoor robotic vacuum cleaner, it works best if you start off with a lawn that's moderately tall. You can't have it overrun with grass that's going to be five feet tall or something crazy like that, because these robots are still more lightweight and compact compared to a full-sized lawnmower or a full-size vacuum cleaner. So it works best when you start off with a room or a space that's decently clean, and afterwards it's just maintaining that same level. For example, by automating it to run one or two times a week, it will always keep the grass at a consistent length, something like this, instead of waiting too long for it to get overgrown and then you need a more powerful cleaner to do the work. So for the initial setup, you may have to still use a traditional lawn mower if you haven't mowed for a really long time before you start using this to keep everything under control and maintaining that length afterwards. So the initial setup might be the most time consuming, but afterwards, because it's just automating itself, you can be doing other tasks while it's working for you, it becomes a little bit easier, potentially saving you on time in the long run, especially if you have a larger property with more grass, I would say. And so this is the charging dock. It uses some of those QR codes on the front there to detect its position and also more accurately dock itself when it needs to be charged back up. Also going to be water resistant and ingress proof with all of the power plugs and connectors are going to be weather sealed as you can tell there to be again water resistant. And then opening up the companion app, they also have some more tutorials and installation guides for reference as well as virtual videos. You simply need to turn on Bluetooth to connect to the lawnmower as well as the GPS antenna and then bind both to your Wi-Fi network allowing you to control it from further away using just the phone app anywhere around the world in the future. Otherwise, in terms of the setup process, there are a couple of firmware updates that get installed when you first take it out of the box, so keep that in mind. In my case, it took around 10 minutes actually to finish downloading software updates to the antenna, the robotic lawnmower, and even the charging station. All three had three software updates, which was a little bit funny, but after it's done, thankfully it worked as expected. You also see the initial step here of initializing if it has a strong enough Wi-Fi signal and also number of satellites that it's detected in the area has to be greater than 25 for it to properly map and give you a higher accuracy when actually mowing in the shape of the lawn that you have selected in the map. So the entire setup process, I would say, takes around 10 to 15 minutes to complete there for the first time. It's not too bad, but keep in mind there will be a couple of software updates and you have to be a little patient initially for everything to bind together for the very first time. And afterwards, it's not really that tedious just to maintain it. And then when you're done, you'll be prompted to 
create your virtual maps or territories, aka zones, that you want to mow on your lawn. Maybe it's only a specific smaller area, and you can do that by using it like a remote control car, using the virtual d-pad there to move the motors and wheels up, down, left, and right, kind of going over the perimeter of the area that you want to actually mow down more specifically, or you can also attach a included tool that's almost like a lever or arm and then drag it around manually, kind of like a traditional lawn mower. And there is just an emergency stop button there as well. So this will map everything out into a virtual space that you can then begin on mowing and it will tell you the surface area of the lawn that you've dragged out and create multiple virtual maps or zones as well in the future for it to do its job. You can also see the battery percentage remaining as well as its strength when it comes to connectivity on the top. And so by setting up maps, you can also kind of naturally have it avoid certain larger obstacles, including fences, things like that. But some of the other objects will just be detecting automatically by using the cameras on the front like a indoor vacuum cleaner. And from here, you can just tap to begin mowing or set up a automated schedule for it to do its thing one or two times a week based on your preferences. So yeah, I can confirm that in operation as well as after you get it initially set up, just maintaining it from the app is pretty easy. And then afterwards, as you guys can see in the demo, it's actually doing a pretty good job. The algorithm that it's using is going over a map kind of in a horizontal way, mowing it in a diagonal pattern over the map that we've created before then going into a circle that gets smaller and smaller every single time. So it's using both the X and Y axes as part of its route planning. And it's doing a pretty decent job overall, I would say, kind of like a, again, indoor robot vacuum cleaner. You can see that live visualization of how much work it's been doing, as well as the amount remaining down below as well. And the accuracy is also not bad when it comes to mapping and edge detection, as long as you have it set up to have a good enough antenna reception for the GPS unit. And ideally, you shouldn't move any of the components like the charging dock, as well as the GPS pole once you have it set up. If you move it around, you're going to have to reinitialize a new map for it to detect the position properly. Menu options here is where you can choose to increase or decrease the obstacle avoidance level or sensitivity, as well as the mowing direction and even the again mowing twice function for an extra clean cycle. So in our case because it was a pretty small lawn surface area it actually only used about 5% of power so it's relatively energy efficient. And you guys can also see in that demo it's actually very quiet more so than I was really expecting especially compared to lawn mowers of the past which are using oil or diesel based engines they can get quite loud but on here it's actually very quiet. In fact if someone is sitting there in the lawn they barely get any distractions just a gentle white noise because because it's an electric model. In fact, it's even quieter than some robotic vacuum cleaners which are for indoor use, ironically enough, because there isn't any suction going on. It's just a kind of spinning fan, essentially, and that's it. So I feel like it's as quiet and non-obtrusive as it can get when it comes to a lawn mower. Actually pretty comfortable. And the wheels didn't have too many difficulties in terms of climbing moderate terrains and bumps in the ground, as you can tell there. Seems to work well enough, especially with some of the extra ruggedness of these wheels. Uh, when it comes to some of the bumps and grooves to help it climb slightly more rough terrain as well. Kind of like an e-bike or a scooter, doing well enough, I would say. It also didn't have too much difficulties returning to the base, as you can tell, uh, using the sensors, again, like robot vacuum cleaners, detecting everything without too many issues. There's also a small display on the very top, by the way, allowing you to gauge basic status info. For example, if the Wi-Fi, GPS, as well as battery is being charged in addition to the duration remaining in its cycle, returning back to the base station so some simple information can be controlled directly on the top if you don't want to use the phone app you can just tap there to begin as well 
And then also, yes, there is a easy handle on the back for lifting it as well. It's not too heavy. In terms of size, it's actually just slightly longer than an indoor robot vacuum cleaner by maybe the width of the wheel section over here. You can see compared to a phone, that might be around six inches. So the section over here is more of the conventional size of a robot vacuum cleaner, and it just protrudes a little bit more for the more durable wheels. Now, again, coming over to the app just one more time, you can see there's another example here of some software updates or firmware updates to improve on the stability being available. And again, it's available separately for the charger, the actual robot itself, as well as the GPS antenna. So sometimes there are three updates uh, since there's kind of three pieces of hardware. And I'm glad to see they are pushing continuous updates over to improve on the stability. In my testing, I actually found it to be pretty stable so far. No real bugs to speak of. So I guess more support is always better than less support, helping potentially free some of your time. Again, especially if you have a larger lawn or surface area, you can then take the time to read, to do other work, for example, gardening, or maybe even cooking inside, doing just office work, and then come back to it and everything would be done for you. It just charges by itself. So saving you time in the long run, even though the initial setup is the most complex. Finally, in the middle tab of the app here, you'll also see some basic notifications and alerts, things like if it's running correctly, if a mo has been finished, you'll also see some of that status info. So yeah, that's more or less it as far as our hands-on review of this Bestmo T100 robotic lawn mower. It's my first foray into this category and I have to say it's working a little better than I expected from the perspective of being extremely quiet and actually doing a fairly effective job of cutting grass. Uh, in our demo, we even tried it with slightly longer grass, as you saw, around three to four inches tall, and it still was able to handle that without too many issues. So the blades, as well as the spinning motors, the wheels were all operating and running without really too many problems. The concept and see it driving by itself autonomously using the cameras and GPS is actually kind of cool to observe and does, again, help you free a little bit of time in the long run, especially since they offer the versatility of trying it out on kind of a month monthly basis with that plan and then owning it after X months as an alternative to purchasing it outright just based on your preferences. It seems a little bit more flexible so it can help you explore if you're on the fence to see if you like it or not first and not have to spend quite as much up front just to test one of these out. So you can check out more details if you're interested in the links down below. A pretty cool category I would say uh, that has been the robotic lawnmower from Best Mo, the T100.